Hey guys, Paul Argueta. I'm gonna give you three tips today on how to stop being lazy. Thanks for visiting our channel. Please make sure that you press the subscribe button so that that way you can have access to all the content that we're creating and curating for you. Now, if you have any ideas for content that you think we should cover or any questions that you would like for us to address, um, by all means, make sure that you comment below or send us an email directly or reach out to us in the community tab of our channel and I'll make sure that we start working on some of those uh, ideas or questions or comments or concerns that you might have. Now, also make sure that you press on the bell icon right next to the subscribe button so that that way you can get alerts immediately anytime that we do uh, create new content. All right, so let's talk about being lazy. Look, I believe that we are all inherently lazy. In fact, I'm gonna take it a step further. I believe that somewhere embedded in our DNA, in our 23, 26 chromosomes, whatever it might be, is a code for laziness. It's embedded in us, somewhere there. Now, once it, you ever saw the beginning of like X-Men, where they show like the DNA strands and the coding, or Spider-Man, the early ones uh, with Tobey Maguire, where they're showing that DNA splicing and all that stuff. Somewhere in that code is a lazy gene. I am convinced of this, all right? Now, some of us have learned how to overcome uh, wanting to be lazy, but the minute they figure out how to get that DNA out of us, you know, we're gonna be a society of nothing but hardworking uh, individuals with amazing work ethic. All right, so, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I think you get the point. We all have that tendency to want to be lazy. It's okay, it's normal, but again, there are those of us who have figured out how to overcome that urge of wanting to be lazy. I'm gonna dive into my personal life a little bit. Now, growing up, I always had tremendous work ethic, all right? I wasn't the smartest, I wasn't the most talented, wasn't the best looking, but I'll tell you what, I worked my off. And I knew that the minute the more talented person started to suffer a little bit of fatigue, that was when I was gonna pass them by because I knew that I could outwork them. That was the one gift that I got from God that he gave me that made me excel, was my ability to hold on or to tread water, right? I could do that. So when that being said, as a father of five with my, uh, with my wife, okay, I expected, right, based on my own personal experience, that because I operated that way, that my children would operate the exact same way. I was wrong, all right? Now, my 19-year-old son, Sebastian, he was a basketball player, and he played in high school, and he was a good player. He could have done more. Now, when it was time for him to go to practice, when it was time for him to join leagues, when it was time for him to, to play, I assumed, because like myself, I thought that he would go and research it. I thought he'd go online. I thought he'd look for the travel teams. I thought he'd register himself. I thought he would do all the things that the younger version of myself would have done when I wanted to, when I wanted something, when I wanted to excel at it, and when I wanted to overachieve at it. I made the mistake of assuming, oh, not only made the mistake of assuming he would do it, but I held it against him that he didn't do it because naturally, in my little head, I thought, well, that's normal behavior. That's how everybody operates. Wrong. And so what happened was I would constantly, I don't want to say berate him, but I would, I, I, would, I would get on him about like, why aren't you researching uh, joining leagues? Why aren't you going and, and joining travel teams? Why aren't you watching videos and drills on how to get better at, uh, at, uh, at, at your sport, right? And I would get on him and I'd get on him and I'd get on him. And you know what? None of that worked. It's not like he started doing those things. In fact, all it did was it created a little bit of a rift between me and my son because I was on him so much. And, and here's the deal. I eventually learned that he wasn't doing anything uh, outside of the ordinary. That just wasn't his personality. That wasn't who he necessarily was. That doesn't mean it was a good thing or a bad thing, but here's what this experience taught me. My daughter, Brianna, is a gymnast, okay? And, and at a young age, she 
would try everything. She wanted to do ballet, she wanted to do acting, she wanted to do singing, she wanted to do gymnastics. And, and every three or four months she'd be switching from one thing to the other. And I remember her saying to us, and there's a video that we found of her when she was about seven or eight years old, and she's on the jungle gym, and she's saying, hey, I want to be a gymnast, Dad, I'm going to be a gymnast, Dad, I'm going to be a gymnast, and she's talking about all this. And I didn't enroll her in any type of gymnastics academy or any type of gymnastics coaching or personal training because I felt that she was involved in so many other different things that she really, this was just another one of her ideas. And here's the deal. I fast forward to now, she's 12 years old, um, I'm not, she's about a level four, level five gymnast. Really, she is now practicing with girls who are younger than her age because she has the goal of making the Olympics. And when we look back at that video of her where she's saying she wants to do gymnastics, I realize that I probably shouldn't have enrolled her in it. Okay, now why am I sharing this? Here's the difference between the two scenarios. Brianna was the type of, of um, child that did have that work ethic and she was researching it and she was watching videos and she is watching videos and she is watching tape and she is reading the books and she is consuming as much information about gymnastics as she can. Now regretfully, I feel had I put her in a little bit earlier, she would be where she is supposed to be right now, okay? Two different childs, or children, raised by the same parents, right? Same household, same work ethic, same everything, same work ethic, at least demonstrated by the parents. Two completely different experiences, all right? Now, my, my other, our middle child, Paul, is a basketball player. Paul is more like his brother Sebastian. Paul doesn't research basketball. He doesn't watch tapes. He doesn't read. Every time I try to get him to basketball practice, it's a chore. I have to drag him out of the house. I have to constantly push him. I have to kick him out of the house. Hey, no, Child Protective Services. I didn't mean that literally. I have to get him out of the house and into the car so that I can get him to practice. All right? I'm experiencing the exact same thing that I did with Sebastian. Now, here's the difference. The difference is with Paul, and what I learned was that Paul will choose to be lazy if given the opportunity. If given the opportunity, he will choose to be lazy every single time. He will choose to not go to practice if I don't hold him accountable, if I don't make him accountable and send him to practice and go there and physically drop him off and get him over there and make sure that he understands. Now, here's the deal. After months and months and months of doing this, he now goes to his practices, he now goes to his games, he now knows, he still calls me every once in a while and tries to tell me, hey, I don't really want to go to practice, but he already knows what my response is going to be. My response is, Paul, you're going to go anyway, all right? And don't ask me again, you're gonna go anyway. Now, had I exhibited the same type of right behavior with Sebastian, his outcome, his high school experience, in my opinion, would have been completely different because I should have taken it upon myself as his parent to have said, you know what? He needs to go. Let me research the travel teams. Let me get him out there. Let me put him in that environment. Let me constantly be pushing him and trying to get him to excel. Let me hold him accountable because right now he's at an age where he can't hold himself accountable and he will choose to be lazy uh, over actually going out there and putting in the work. That doesn't mean he's a bad person. That just means that, like most of us, we'll choose the opportunity to be lazy over work, over hard work. Nobody likes the hard work. No one, but everybody loves the accolades. Everybody loves the reward, but nobody wants to put in the work, okay? Now look, years later, I can beat myself over the head about the experience. I can tell myself how, how much of a bad parent I was, but the truth is, all it did was it just taught me the way that I should be operating, right? That I need to hold my children accountable. Not everyone is gonna be like Brie. Not everyone is gonna be like me, and I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm not saying anything about myself. All I'm saying is, I just had a different work ethic. And I know that even if I had someone holding me accountable, I could probably perform at an even better level, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit. So, I got really long-winded, okay? I, don't, I didn't want to go into this part too long, but I think you get the point. What I discovered as a parent was that I had to hold my children accountable because if I gave them the opportunity to hold themselves accountable, they would choose uh, to be average. They would choose to be lazy. Not all of them. I've got that one breed. We're back, we, you know, we've got her that will hold herself accountable. Even she needs a coach to help her excel and go even higher. All right. So how does this apply to business and what are we going to talk about? The three re reasons. Number one, the very first thing that you need to do in order to not be lazy, go to sleep a little bit earlier. Yeah, look, here's the deal. 
go to sleep a little bit earlier. I know that it's very tempting to go and watch Netflix at 10.30, 11 o'clock, midnight, and then try to wake up early and get it all done, but it's difficult. You do need your sleep. You do need time to recover. You do need that mental relaxation. Your brain needs to shut itself off. So go to bed earlier so that you can wake up earlier, so that you can be more refreshed, so that you can accomplish more during the next day. So that's number one. Number one, very simple, go to bed earlier, wake up earlier, okay? Number two, you need to have some type of a physical regimen in order for yourself to stop being so lazy, okay? You need a physical regimen. I don't care what profession you're in, you need to make sure that you're doing some type of physical activity, some type of exercise, so that you could, you could be healthier, okay? Now look, I'm not gonna go into diets because the truth is, even I need to work on my diet a little bit, but, but I can speak from personal experience about what you feel like when you're at the gym, when you're, you're, you have some type of physical resume, when you're jogging, when you're bicycling, when you're uh, doing yoga, whatever it might be, you need to have some type of physical regimen in your schedule so that you can feel better, so that you can look better and be more confident about yourself. And look, even if you don't see results right away, even if you don't see results for a long time, you know, the, at the end of the day, you still feel better knowing that you've had some type of physical activity, knowing that you did that and you invested in yourself. So make sure that you have some type of physical activity so that that way you have more energy. It boosts your energy. It does, it does um, release those pheromones, right? All right, I'm gonna let the fire truck pass again. Okay, and number three. Number three is what I've been talking about throughout the entire video, really. Accountability. You need to have an accountability partner. And if you don't have an accountability partner and you can't find someone that can hold you accountable in your business, in your workout routine, and you know, I, there's an accountability partner in the office for me and there's an accountability partner for me at home, and it's my wife. My accountability partner is, is and my gym accountability partner. So the person that holds me accountable at home right, is my wife, and to a certain degree, my children, and maybe even our dogs, and maybe even the rabbit that we have. But, but anyway, the, the, uh, the person that holds me accountable at home is my wife, right? And here at the office, you have accountability partners, right? Now, look, if you say, look, I don't have anyone that can hold me accountable here in the office, then guess what? Go out and find yourself a coach. There are plenty of coaches, okay, that will take your money to hold you accountable. Now, I'm not saying that facetiously and I'm not saying that in a bad way but that's their job just like a personal trainers job is to hold you accountable to make sure that you put in those reps to make sure that you eat the right foods to make sure that you do everything that you're supposed to do so that you can look the way you want to look right or achieve the results that you want to achieve so if you can't get an accountability partner in the office then guess what? You need to go out and you need to hire an accountability coach that can hold you accountable and you have to pay for it. That's just the luck of the draw. That's the way it is. Sorry, not sorry. The, the less expensive approach is to find someone in the office that, you, that can hold you accountable. All right, And that also means that you can do other things like joining other groups, join other networking groups that can help you hold uh, uh, yourself accountable as well. Okay, There's plenty of business coaching groups that are out there that can do that for you. All right. Now look, and this video wasn't intended to be very long. I just wanted to give you three real quick tips on how to stop being lazy. And I, I invited you into a little bit of my personal life and some of the stuff that I've gone through as a parent that has impacted me, not only at home, but it has impacted me in the office as well and the way that I conduct my business, all right? So please make sure that you subscribe again. Subscribe to the channel so that you can have access to content like this that we're curating and creating for you. Make sure that you comment below if you have any experiences that you'd like to share. Look, I learn a lot from other people and from the comments and from what they, they feel comfortable sharing with me. So make sure that you comment below. If there's uh, information that you'd like for us to, to talk about in our next video, by all means, let us know. Again, you can do that in the comment section below or you can go to our community tab um, in our YouTube channel and then you can comment there. Uh, also make sure that you click on the notification bell so that you can get notifications. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to meeting you. All right, take care. Talk soon.